Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to be giving you a tour of our garden in August. If you're new around here, my name is Michelle and I live here with my husband Aaron on our two acre homestead in Virginia, gardening zone 7A. On these two acres, we have a vegetable garden where we try and grow a lot of our own food and we also have 10 chickens and two Nigerian dwarf goat kids. For today's garden tour, I'm going to try and keep it a little shorter than the previous ones. Since I do these every month, sometimes it feels like I'm repeating a lot of the same information, especially for plants that have already been in the garden. And even though things change every month, there are definitely things that have been here for a long time. And yeah, sometimes I just don't want to repeat all that information over and over again for those who watch all of our videos. But if you're new and there's something that I don't cover, you can always check out our older garden tour videos because chances are I've covered a lot of the stuff in the past videos. I think I started this year with our garden tours in April. So I think this is like the fifth video of the year. So yeah, you can always check out the older ones. But with that out of the way, let's move on to the tour. Here's our overview of how the garden is looking right now. Aaron's working on some builds for the goats back there. So you might hear some noise here and there. We've been harvesting lots of raspberries lately from this patch. I think we get probably like a cup of raspberries a day. These are raspberry bushes that we got from our neighbors when they were pruning their bushes. They just gave us a few branches and we stuck them in the ground and they're growing really well. So if you know someone who has raspberries, they'd probably be willing to give you some prunings that you could plant. So that's a really nice way to get free or inexpensive raspberry bushes. In this first bed, I have a lot of the same stuff as in the last previous months, but I do have a patch of sugar snap peas that are climbing up this trellis now. And I've also started transplanting a lot of my fall brassica crops. So I have a few of them in the bed over here. In the next bed, we have a lot of stuff going on. Starting on this side, I have lots of these bush beans. These are dragon tongue bush beans, and we have just started harvesting these. And they are so pretty and so delicious. Definitely one of my favorite beans to grow because when they get really big, they don't have like a string on them, so they stay really nice and tender and they're also just so pretty and very productive as well. So these have just started producing, but now that they are, we're gonna be picking lots and lots of beans coming up very soon. Then this area here, these are my daikon radishes and they have started forming some roots now. You can see these make like a long white radish and these are great for like braised root vegetables and I also like to use it when I make kimchi. Then I have a line of some shelling peas coming up here. We planted these in a video and pretty much all of them have come up now. You can see there's the start of the peas over here. In the next bed, I had some determinate tomatoes, but those are pretty much done and I've kind of been debating over the last week or so if I should go ahead and pull out these plants or just start planting around them. I've started pruning back a lot of the dead branches, so you can see there's like a big empty space in the middle here. But some of the branches still have some nice green tomatoes forming. But you can tell that they kind of have like disease on the tomatoes as well. So I'm wondering if I should just go ahead and pick them green and then we can make like fried green tomatoes and then I can just completely redo this bed and put in some new stuff for the fall while there's still time. So that's something I've been debating and yeah, if I choose to do that, that'll probably have to be in the next couple of weeks. You can see there's a little bit of growth on this trellis with our Scarlet Runner beans and also some yard long beans. Here are some of the yard long beans and I have a green variety and then my Scarlet Runner beans here, they have just, the, just this beautiful like red color and those have just like reached the top of the trellis and have just started blooming. But I'm hoping that they'll put on a lot more growth so that this whole trellis is gonna be covered. These are a bean, but I've noticed that my flowers are just dropping off and not actually forming beans. I'm not really sure why, but that's totally okay. I mostly planted these just so that they would be pretty anyway. And also the hummingbirds really love them. So they are always on our trellises lately, visiting these flowers because hummingbirds really like red flowers. And they also love trellises. They like to just land on the trellis and sit there. So if you're trying to attract hummingbirds to your garden, make sure you have places for them to sit and rest because they definitely really like to do that. We've had a lot of growth in this last bed on this side in the past month. Firstly, I have some asters that I transplanted, I think just last month, and now they're blooming. And I think they're so pretty. 
This is the first one that's blooming, but then I also have a couple more plants and I'm waiting to see them open up to see what kind of colors we're gonna get here. But they are looking really pretty. And then we have kind of like a whole jungle of things here. We have some edamame plants over here, which are starting to form some pods. Then we have a sweet potato vine over here. We've also got a watermelon, kind of like in this area that's coming from this part of the bed. And we have one watermelon growing. I think this is an orange watermelon. And hopefully it grows and does okay. I did notice there are some like bug marks or scratches on it. So yeah, I'm not sure if that's actually gonna do anything. Watermelons are so hard for us to grow. So it's usually a hit or miss. Usually a miss if I'm honest, <laughs> but we try every year anyway. And then lastly in this area for most of this vining plant, I figured that this one is a Dutch crookneck, I think, not a butternut, because you can see here how it does have that crookneck shape. It's curved and I've got a few really nice sized squashes on here. I think I've seen at least three that are about this size and this is pretty big. This is definitely like four to five pounds. It's really heavy. And I've actually got one in here that is almost just about ready to pick. You can see how it's more of like an orangey color. And I'm just waiting for the skin to get a little bit harder until it does not leave an indent when I push my nail into there. Right now it's still leaving a little bit of an indent. But yeah, I've got the one, then a second one here, and then there's a third one here. That one looks huge actually. That's probably the biggest one of all of them. And it's definitely still setting off fruit. Like here's a little baby fruit here. So yeah, it should be interesting. So far the plant's doing really well, not too much bug damage. So I'm hoping that we're gonna get even more fruit off of it. On the other side of the garden here, I'm back in the front now. And I have a little patch of some green beans over here. I think these are provider green beans, but I've noticed there's a lot of damage on these green beans. And I'm actually wondering if these bugs on here are the ones that are making all of these holes in the beans because I see a couple of them on the beans. I thought it was bean beetles, but these look like they're something else. So I'll have to look up what they are. But yeah, I've seen a lot of damage on the actual beans, unfortunately, so they're really not that great for eating. You can see how on this bean, there's these like little marks on there. It's not a big deal when they're on the tip, but then when they're on the middle of the bean, it's really annoying. So you can see how this one has some marks on either end, but those I can snap off but a lot of times it'll be on the middle of the bean. Like you can see how this one's been kind of destroyed. So I don't know how much I'll be picking off of this patch, but it's actually okay because the bugs have mostly been sticking to this patch of beans. So my beans in this bed have been pretty much undamaged. So I'm kind of just treating this patch in this bed as kind of like the trap crop for whatever bug is eating them. At least it's just like a small patch. Otherwise I would be more upset. Then my kale, I have started spraying every so often with BT just to keep the caterpillars under control because you can see there's a lot of bug damage on them right now. And now that we're getting closer to fall, we are gonna start to want to eat this kale soon. So the BT does help to manage the caterpillars without damaging bees or any other animals. I've got a couple of tomato plants in here, which are kind of my only tomatoes that are still looking really good. So I'm glad that I still have some going because most of the tomatoes in my garden are pretty much done right now. But I have a couple really nice sized ones that I'm waiting to ripen. Then at the end, I have a kabocha squash over here, although I haven't seen any squash forming yet. And here we have a ground cherry, which has grown a lot. And we have started harvesting and eating some of these, only enough to really snack on. And if you don't know what a ground cherry is, it's a husk fruit. So you can see how there's like a little fruit in this husk. And they kind of taste like a pineapple tomatillo. They're really, really good. They have a very tropical flavor. And yeah, we pretty much just snack on these in the garden. And when they're ripe, they do fall to the ground, which is why they're called a ground cherry. But yeah, they are super good. A really fun thing to grow if you haven't tried them before. In the next bed, I have my sweet potato jungle. And now that I've taken the covers off of this bed, the leaves definitely are not looking as good as they did last month. You can see there's a lot more like holes and bug damage on them, but that's okay. We've gotten a few like really nice meals off of the sweet potato leaves. And you can see that 
they're starting to have some blossoms as well. Ooh, oh my gosh. I didn't realize there was a spider in there when I touched it. You see that little guy? That was startling. <laughs> okay, so anyway, the sweet potatoes are blooming a little bit. And the blooms are really pretty. They look like morning glory flowers because sweet potatoes are in the same family. Then I have a couple of eggplant plants in the middle of this bed as well. Like over here is one. I have not gotten any eggplant yet this year. Definitely not the year of eggplants for us. In the next bed, I have four zucchini plants that have just exploded since last month and we have been harvesting zucchini again since our Spring planted zucchini is definitely gone at this point. This is like my second round of zucchinis and they're looking so good and so healthy. And the zucchini we've been picking off of these are so nice. These are the new zucchini plants that I just got from Haas Tools. And they are spineless zucchini, which I really love. And we're just enjoying the zucchini while we have them. I know it's not gonna last very long because I know for sure that there are vine borers in the stems of these plants. I have seen so many eggs being laid everywhere on these plants, not only on the stems, but they're like starting to lay them even on the leaves and like on the stems of the flowers. It's crazy. I've picked off so many of the vine borer eggs. Not really any squash bugs or squash bug eggs, surprisingly, but just the vine borers. But you can see how those stems are kind of like chewed up a little bit. Oh yeah, these ones look pretty rough. So I know we just have a little bit longer before these plants give into those vine borers, but we're just trying to enjoy all of the zucchini while we have it. We also have scarlet runner beans on this trellis as well that are starting to reach the top. They're blooming and they're so beautiful. On the other side, it's looking so empty. I had an Armenian cucumber that I ended up just pulling out. We did not harvest a single cucumber. The plant just dried up all of a sudden. And yeah, that's my third year in a row of trying to grow Armenian cucumbers and it just has not worked for me. So I'm giving up on that variety. It's just not for us. I have not been able to get it to work. So since I pulled that out at the base of this trellis, I did put in some more sugar snap peas. Hopefully those will cover this trellis for the fall because my trellises have been so sad this year. It's been just so empty and it just hasn't really felt like summer since my trellises have not been filled up. So I'm hoping that at least for fall they'll be filled in. And then a lot of the rest of this bed, I've put in another round of tomatoes. I started these July 8th, and these are all Roma tomatoes. And I started another round of these because my Roma tomatoes produce really well, but only for a very short period of time. And sure enough, they're like all dead now. So I wanted to see if I could get another round of tomatoes in before our first frost. I'm not sure if it's too late, but we'll just see how it goes. I can already see that these are starting to set flowers. You see just little, little beginnings of it. So yeah, we'll see. Hopefully I'll get another round of tomatoes because I definitely did not do as much preserving of tomatoes this year as I would like. And it would be nice if I could can some more before we get into winter. I've got another winter squash here, but I haven't seen any fruit forming. So we'll just skip over that for now. In the back garden, on the right side. Honestly, I don't know how much there really is to show you. Pretty much everything has died back or become overtaken with weeds. And I'm getting very close to the point of putting a chicken wire fence around this garden and just letting the chickens out to try and like dig through a lot of these weeds for me. Our tomatoes are almost all gone. We're picking mostly just like cherry tomatoes right now. I still have some pink bumblebees and some artisan blush tomatoes but all of my larger tomatoes have all gone. All my Roma tomatoes are gone. And then I also just have this area where I've planted cow peas and you can see those are starting to form. So that's kind of like the only thing that I have that's actively growing in this area right now. Actually, while I'm back here, I'm gonna take a little visit to the chickens, give them a little treat and then let them out in this small fenced in area so that they can just dig around in the grass for a little bit. So I've been giving them a lot of these grub terra larvae lately. You can see they're getting so excited. But yeah, I've been giving them these grub terra larvae just because I've noticed that we have gotten some thin shelled eggs. And since these have more calcium than mealworms, I thought this would be great to try and get their eggs to be 
a little thicker and more substantial and you can see they're just going crazy for it they love this stuff so much ever since last month when we first introduced them now they are all about it when they hear like the rustle of that bag they do get very excited So now in the last area of the garden here, the peppers are still going and I did come in with a dose of fertilizer last week since the peppers are just starting their kind of like second big flush of peppers and I noticed that some of my peppers were getting smaller so I made sure to fertilize them and I think that's going to help. My larger peppers especially, I can see that the second crop of peppers is just starting. We're kind of like in between like the flushes of peppers right now. We kind of ate everything from the first crop of peppers and now I'm just anxiously waiting for the second crop. Usually the second one is bigger. That's exciting because we barely had enough to like wet our appetite the first time around. Um, so I'm hoping that I get a lot of peppers and then if I get enough, maybe I can even do some preserving in the form of like roasting them and then maybe freezing roasted peppers or infusing them in olive oil. We'll see how it goes. I do have some poblano peppers forming here. I have not picked any of these yet. They're definitely like my slowest peppers to form this year. But yeah, overall the peppers are doing really well, looking really good. My patch of flowers here is still looking really nice. It's such a bright pop of color. My eyes always go towards this little patch of flowers whenever I look out the window. And it's just been really nice to have. Look at how pretty and full this zinnia is. It's so gorgeous. And the butterflies and the hummingbirds have really, really been liking these flowers as well. So it's nice to see them visiting. I just love zinnias when they have like so many layers of petals. They're so fluffy and pretty. In this patch where we had sown carrots in a vlog, none of my carrots came up or they came up and dried out and died. It had been really hot after I sowed these and you can see I haven't watered yet today so it's looking a little dry. I have to come out and do that. But I did end up re-sowing all those carrots so I'm hoping that they come up this time and I just have to try really hard to keep it moist and well watered. It's just really hard to do in the summer. It's kind of tricky to germinate carrots, but let's hope this second round germinates. Then in this back patch, I have this beautiful, beautiful patch of green beans. I don't actually remember what variety these are. They're either Blue Lake bush beans or Provider bush beans, but those are just starting to form right now. I have not harvested anything yet, but you can see there's lots of flowers on here and little itty bitty baby beans here. So really soon we're going to have another nice productive patch of beans to pick from and you can see that because I've covered this patch. I had frost fabric before and now I've switched it over to tulle. Look at how nice these bean leaves look compared to the bean leaves in other parts of my garden where I don't have them covered and I'm hoping that this will really help with the bug damage and we'll get lots of nice beans without holes in them in this patch. I actually only put this on so that the deer wouldn't eat my beans because they did eat like a whole row of beans earlier this summer and I didn't want that to happen again. Apparently it also helps with the bugs, which is really nice. All right, so in the last row that normally I keep covered, I have mostly brassicas in here. These are all new brassicas for the fall. Um, but also at either end, I just popped in some cucumber plants here and I don't have any trellising for them. They're just gonna sprawl on the ground. But I can see that cucumbers are starting to form here now which will be great because I have had to pull out my earlier crops of cucumbers because they were all dead and dried up. So another round of cucumbers for the fall would be great. And then mostly the rest of the row, like all down here, we have lots of different types of brassicas. It's kind of just a repeat of what we've done in the spring. And yeah, we're hoping that they do better in the fall, but I am a little bit scared because I think I saw some rustling around our shed, not on the side actually, but like towards the back over here, I saw some rustling. And for those of you who have been here in the spring, you know that we had an issue with some voles in the spring that came and ate all of my freshly planted brassica plants. So I'm really, really hoping that we don't have the Brassica 
I've been making sure to check on these plants every day because at the first sign of damage, we are getting those traps out again. The only problem is that now that it's summer and there's a lot more weeds, it's very hard to see if there are any like um, channels or tunnels where the voles or like what I'm assuming are voles to see where they might be. So it will be harder to place the traps. So for now, okay, I thought I saw vole damage, but this one I think just died because it was not watered well enough. I got really scared for a second there. But anyway, yeah, at the first sign of damage, we're getting those traps out. I think for now my plants are safe because since it's summer and there's a lot more food available, they're not going to be going towards my seedlings. At least that's the hope. We do have a peach tree over here, which has been dropping lots of like worm infested peaches. And I have seen a lot of peaches around here that kind of look like they have bite marks in them. So I think whatever animals in here is preoccupied with the peaches. So thankfully they're staying out of the garden for right now. We're hoping it stays that way and hopefully these plants will grow big enough where by the time it becomes an issue, if it's like closer into fall, then the grass will be a little bit more dead and then we can find the channels to like put the traps in. Yeah, that's what's going on here. We're just hoping that it all goes well this time because if all my plants get eaten again, that's gonna be a tough pill to swallow. So that's gonna be it for today's garden tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.